This virtual pinball machine is supposed to be the Rolls Royce of virtual pins, the Ultra VP7. Supposedly the absolute best virtual pin on the market today. But does it really deliver everything it promises? Let's dive in and find out, and watch till the end to see if it gets a rating of cool or crap. The Ultra VP7 boasts an industrial 49-inch 4K 120Hz playfield monitor and a full-size 27-inch wide-body cabinet covered with game-controlled LED light strips, beacons, and strobes. Three industrial IPS monitors for the topper, back glass, and DMD. Inside, it has full force feedback with eight solenoids, two contactors, a shaker motor, and gear motor. An analog Williams-style plunger with potentiometer supposedly allows for ultra-realistic skill shots. And the physical tilt bob and analog nudging brings virtual pinball to the next level. But wait, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's rewind back a little to see what you get when you first unbox the machine. All right, guys, so here it is. First, we're gonna do an overview of the machine, just a quick general overview. Then we're gonna take a look inside, and then I'll show you guys a little bit of gameplay on some of my favorite tables. If you guys are ready, hit that like button. I'm kinda getting ahead of myself here, but guys, look how gorgeous this is. This is the standard plunger that it comes with. You can get like custom ones made from them for a little bit extra when you order the machine, but this thing just unscrews here, and if you have a 3D printer, the sky's the limit. You can literally just design anything. And then see, like, you can screw this one on. It just like screws in, it's an M8 thread and actually I kind of like that one so I might leave that one on there for now the nice thing about this and this is what I love about this thing is this machine has all kind of switches like this and they're so easily labeled so you don't want the knocker thing scaring the crap out of you that thing scares the crap out of me boom it's off you don't want the beacons to spin up here because maybe you're just annoyed by the lights boom you can turn them on and off you don't want goober the cat annoying you while you're doing a review on the pinball machine Boom, you can turn her off. Gorgeous LED, look at it, blue my favorite color. The camera is not gonna do this justice, guys, and these will uh, flash depending on what game you play and the different colors, and there's also awesome, look at this underglow here, the blue, that you got all LEDs all around the uh, cabinet here, and they will uh, change depending on what game that you play. Also, speaking of the LEDs, I just wanna address something that's appearing on camera here. They appear to be like flashing and doing the weird thing. That is not the case in real life. They're just solid on in real life. And the reason is the camera's shooting at 29 frames a second in 4K, that's what I'm using, and the refresh rate of the lights is making it weird. But I assure you, in real life, they're not uh, doing the weird flicker thing, so I just wanted to note that. They're just on solid, and they're gorgeous, and again, they're, those are optional as well with a little switch underneath. You can turn them on and off. Come under the pinball machine with Arcade Matt. So this is this is what uh, how you shut the thing down. So it's like a PC. So you just press that in, it goes through the shutdown thing, and then you hit your power switch. This is the main power switch that like turns the monitors and stuff. You got your volume control here. You can press it in to mute it, which I have it muted because the, the game does play some music and we don't want to get copyright stricken. Here's all your other things under here, which is so nice. So you don't want the shaker motor, boom, you can turn it off. You don't want the fan, which is this thing. Some games have the fan here, you can just turn it off. You don't want your LED strips, boom, you can just turn them off, look at that. You can even turn on and off the tilt bobber, so if you wanna tilt away or practice nudging, it's just an easy switch and everything is controllable right here. All right, also while we're under the machine here, we got this amazing eight inch down firing subwoofer here guys and this thing like the sound from my mic is not going to do this justice but it's incredible and it really gives you that immersion here and it's fully enclosed and this box right here is actually where it sits under so you got your pc here in the back and the subwoofer is actually fully enclosed in this case here. Now what makes this thing like insane in my opinion is the monitor that's in here. It emulates a full size table here guys. It takes up the whole thing. This is a specially made LG monitor. So they have exclusive 120 hertz 4K control boards in this monitor which makes it gorgeous. Like you can't just go on Amazon and buy this monitor and plop it in here so and it takes up the full thing so that's why the led lights are positioned all the way in the back here other ones other companies you know they use shorter monitors and then they got all this space here so they'll use like these different leds these are like the legit ones so that's why they're positioned like that and you'll notice it takes up the whole play field which we love that's more awesomeness for you and i'll tell you right now the camera is not going to do this justice we're shooting in 4K, this is 4K here. Now I will say that when you're scrolling through the menu, 
the previews are definitely a little bit, they're sometimes a little pixelated, but once you go into the game, it's it's fine. These are just like the preview t uh, tables here. I will say as I'm reviewing this, this is not sponsored by Ultra VP. I simply contacted them and we worked out a deer, a deer, a deer, a deer. <laughs> I gave them a deer and they gave me this, no. We worked out a deal where uh, they just gave this to me at a uh, discount in exchange for an honest review. So that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of just showing this off to you guys. That's how it, this came to be. Like they're not paying me to make this video. <laughs> also, when you get your machine, you get like a uh, cloning thing so in a spare drive. This has all like the original stuff on it. So if anything were to go bad on this, you can clone this to another drive and you always have a backup, which is super cool that they include that. And then you also get two extra uh, Soul noise. These are the things that fire inside the machine, which I'm going to show you in a second. These are good backup ones. You also get a few extra switches in here, so uh, you just get regular micro switches for like the buttons. These buttons, by the way, apparently uh, they used to have trouble with them rotating and whatnot. No longer on the VP7. Yeah, so they said they just they fixed that issue. This is what I love. I'm a geek in these things, and you you guys can see over here on my arcade one up. I actually and I noticed they're making them like this now. And I actually cut this out and bought a real coin mech and hooked it up. So it will take coins if I have the free play button off. Why do I like that? I don't know. It's just, it's just something about it makes it more. It feels more authentic. And a lot of people might be like, I don't care about that, but it's included anyway. Is a real working coin mech here, guys. So you can put coins in and it will credit up. Now, a lot of some of these tables, you'll have to actually insert like virtual coins. So you have a coin button right here if you just wanna tap that. But it, I think it's really cool that the coin mech works here. I think that's awesome. And they also give you this awesome little uh, wireless Logitech keyboard. You can turn that on and that allows you to go in and do things. So you got your topper monitor here. And uh, this is these are optional up here. This topper is optional and so are the lights. Some people might have clearance issues. As you can see, this just made it. I made sure I measured here with the ceiling. But you can get this optional without that. And they also have these in the low profile ones. These are the spinning ones. I think these give off a little bit of a better light when they spin on certain games will use these. And some games that don't even have these will use them anyway. Like if you hit a jackpot or whatever, sometimes they'll go off. Really immersive thing. I think one of my favorite things about this is this gorgeous back glass right here. Like look at this Guardians here. I mean, this literally just looks looks like a piece of paper up here and the camera ain't gonna do it justice. Now, speaking of monitors, let's come back here. And now we're gonna start to dive inside the machine. I'm gonna show you guys what makes this thing in frick incredible. Goober the cat, don't be jumping in, man. So these are industrial LED monitors. These aren't just like, like they're not just taking a computer monitor and just plopping them in there. They last longer and they look gorgeous. So it's running an RTX, I believe 3060, which is, you know, more than, a, it'll run any table on here. Now I did have a few tables that I, I and it's not the fault of really the machine. Uh, it's just VPX is still kind of being updated, one of the things, and some of them were a little, uh, jumpy and it, just going in and adjusting the settings on a few of them made it uh, buttery smooth like sometimes turning off shadows and stuff but that's more of like uh, the software limitations of VPX right now but they are still updating that which is cool and you can you know this thing is completely updatable and it has Wi-Fi and everything and you'll notice this is completely encased and it's got great airflow these are the solenoid things here that I was talking about that are responsible for like the uh, the knocking of the um, pop bumpers and the slings and stuff, and there's eight of those in there, which is crazy. So you're gonna wanna just make sure stuff is unplugged. Do you ever wanna service this? Good point, Adam. This thing just pulls right out here like this, boom. You make sure you wanna unplug everything first, but yeah, if you wanna service anything, it comes right out. And that's what we're gonna get into next is the insides of this thing, and it's just how organized like the wires is on this thing is incredible. So let's open this thing up. And I'm gonna show you guys the meat and potatoes. So to open it up and service it just like a real pinball machine, check this out, a little lever under here. You just push it to the left. This thing off. I can't think of it. Oh my God, total brain fart right now. Your front thingy pops up. Why can't I think of what that is? Oh, this is a remote too if you wanna adjust any of the play field settings like brightness, stuff like that, saturation, you can do it right here. Super easy with the remote that they give you. And I'll show you guys these too. It's like a stereoscopic mode. You can put uh, certain tables in. Not as good as VR, but it's still a neat little gadget to have and it's optional. 
Uh, VR is coming though in the future on future updates and uh, that's amazing if you have a VR set, so. So then you just take your little uh, side things off here and then you'll be able to slide the glass out. All right, so you just lift it up. There's like these little lips on here and you just lift it up and it should slide right out like so, just like a real pinball, this is crazy. Look how neat, this, this literally lifts up just like a real play field here. So this is the monitor, 49 inch monitor here and a prop thing right here. Isn't that neat? So you can get in like just like a real pit. It's so insane. So this is marine grade plywood here. So this is not MDF. It's, it's seven layers. The reason this is important is the sound travels so much better when you have like your uh, solenoids going off and stuff. It just sounds so much more authentic. Notice like inside here the wires. So you got like this Everything is, is so organized. It's going through this, uh, this little track thing here and everything is bundled and everything is clipped. So for example, say if you need to service this board, it's literally just a few screws, few clips and it, you can service it. This board here is super important. This controls all the knockers and crap inside. So it's like this thing right here is amazing. And it, what it is, it's a custom DOF board and a DOF stands for, wait for it, device output framework. I totally did not refer to my notes for that guys. In stupid mat terms over here, this basically communicates with the computer and the computer tells this thing when to fire certain things like the solenoid in the back if the, the ball's back there hitting pop bumpers and freaking whatnot. It, it tells this board, it's saying, hey, fire that crap back there, man, because that's what's gonna make it realistic. These are protected, so these are high voltage things. So, you know, you can't get zapped, basically. So this is a shaker motor here, and then the other one controls the uh, the motor back there. And it's all, all the high powered voltage stuff is contained, so you don't have to worry about that. Getting zapped like a dingleberry. So there's a total of three amplifiers on this thing. The two amplifiers that are in the back are for the transducers, and those are known as like exciter speakers, and they're responsible for like feedback and whatnot. And those can be adjusted. You see these here? These are the amplifier things here and you can adjust the intensity of them and stuff like that. Oh yeah, this thing right here. See that little thing that says motor? That's a gear motor. For example, in, in the hand in Adam's family, when it goes and picks up the ball, there, there's a gear that's moving that. And you can actually adjust this the intensity. Right now I think it's on 100%. It's like all the way up. But if you don't want it as loud or as intense, you can turn that down with your amplifier things here, which is super cool. You can just turn it off. But also on games like Medieval Madness, when the drawbridge goes up and down, you'll be able to actually hear the freaking thing going up and down. It's crazy. The only thing is I think they should have labeled these, like what the amplifiers are for. I think that would have been cool. There's a bass kicker on the bottom which is this thing here and, and the sound, go, it's like underneath the machine. And this is super important on why this thing has th this full uh, size monitor in here, like a full size play field. Because the smaller machines, when you have like these elements in here, if it's a smaller machine, you gotta cram them closer together and the sound is just gonna sound like it's coming from the middle of the machine, which isn't realistic. When you're playing real pinball and you shoot the ball up and it's in the pop bumpers up top, you want the sound from the virtual to sound like it's from up top and not in the middle of the god dang thing. So that's why it's important that the uh, size of the monitor, everything is spatially gorgeous in this thing. You can actually feel and hear where the sound is coming from depending on where the ball is at. Is basically, in simpler terms, what all this stuff is responsible for. So this has like a potentiometer thing on it here. And what this is, the plunger is actually hooked up to this thing and it sends a signal to the software and it actually emulates, and I'm gonna show you guys this in a second here when we do some gameplay, it emulates how far this plunger is pulled back and when you let it go and everything. It's unbelievable, this thing. Super important to make it more realistic. If you want a light plunge to land a skill shot, you can do it with this. Another important thing, real tilt bob right here. And you can make this harder and easier, just like on real pinballs, you can adjust this up and down. I still have to kind of level this. A lot of machines won't even have this and it'll just rely on the software to do it, which is so unrealistic. So we're gonna go back to this board here. This board here, just like in your phone, has an accelerometer inside so it knows the direction. 
So when you nudge the machine, it knows if I'm hitting the, the left side or the right side or nudging forward. And I'm gonna show you a demo of this in a second once we do the gameplay. These are like your knockers here for the uh, flippers and it just kind of gives you a little bit of feedback here. This blue button here changes the uh, colors. Flipper buttons on the side here. You can do like rainbow mode and there's like a ton of different colors to choose from, which is neat. So this is just the volume in the actual menu of the game, like when you're going to select your table. So if you don't want it as loud, I kind of turn mine down because sometimes it gets like really loud when you're selecting tables. Uh, and this knob here controls the shaker motor intensity. So you can turn it all the way off or you want it cranked up. And uh, this knob controls the, we were talking about that gear motor in there. See what the motor back there, it controls the intensity of that. I think it's all the way up now. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit because sometimes it is a little, it is a little much, I think, but you can adjust all that here. I love how customizable this thing is like, and you can literally change this to how you want it. All of that is in unison, like a freaking orchestra is probably the best way to describe this. And when you're playing these tables, now, Keep in mind, not every table is going to have this, and I'll explain that once we get into the software, but that's up to the actual people who design the tables, which is separate uh, from the company that's actually building and selling you this machine. Another thing about this gorgeous play field monitor, 120 hertz is a must for me. I am crazy picky about hertz on monitors. My, my PC monitor's got to be at least 144. 120 gives you that more smooth motion, especially in pinball where that ball's moving pretty fast. 60 hertz just doesn't do it for me anymore. You know, once you play a 120 hertz pin, you will never want to play a 60 hertz one ever again, a virtual pin. So super important IPS display, meaning you can view this at all kind of different freaking angles. And you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna like the image ain't gonna look weird on some of the older uh, LCD monitors back in the day, you know, you'd look, you, you, you like move one degree and it's like, whoa, the colors are gone. No, this, this you can view at almost any angle and it just looks gorgeous. So IPS display is another amazing thing and I'm so glad this thing has. Would I have loved to see 144 Hertz monitor? Absolutely, maybe in the future, but you know, I don't think there's, you'll really notice much of a difference on it, at least I haven't, so. Now there's music playing on this and there's certain songs, but I'm gonna have that muted because I don't want the video to get like taken down or anything. So for the sake of this video, we can, you know, you can have it really loud. This is the menu. This is the, the pinup popper. So this is your interface where you select the games, basically. My only tiny little pet peeve, and this is just me because I'm only 5'8", and look at me, I got the, like, these stubby legs and crap. I wish the legs were a little bit shorter, and I don't know if they'll in the future offer like shorter, like a little bit lower of an option. And the flippers for buttons for me are at a perfect position. Those ones are a tad bit higher. So you, that, that's your flipper button here, but then you got like your Magna Save buttons here. For games like Grand Lizard, for example, you need that extra button on the side. A lot of machines don't have that. This one here, speak of the devil, I actually have a Jackbot machine upstairs. You, you need that extra ball button if you have cheat mode enabled. They included it here. So they, everything is on this machine to play every single possible pin that you can think of and all the options are there as well, which is super cool. Another crazy thing that this thing has is actually some vertical MAME games. And there's like, so there's like 87 games in this category. I think that my personal opinion on this, it's cool. I think that's awesome they're included. I probably won't play the MAME games on this simply because I have the smaller arcade one up. And you know, it's a little, the screen definitely does stretch this out because this true screen is so ginormous. It, it might look a little weird on it, but they're on here just in case you wanna have fun and chillax. So, you know, you have those kind of games. Playlist is neat. So this sorts all the tables and categories. So you got kids tables. Uh, how, holiday tables. Now there's horror themes, so this is gonna be all your horror tables grouped together. You wanna play uh, movie tables, boom. Because all your movie theme tables are in one thing right here. This is neat, so you have your non-flipper games. These are actually cool. I think I would be finding myself playing these. So these are games like, uh, you know, shuffleboard and all that, shuffle bowling, and they've got some really neat things on here. Like look at this, like a pachinko machine for God's sakes, look. How neat these recreations are. Even ice cold beer for God's sakes. That's such a classic game. Nudge it, we've actually played, look how good that looks. Remember that at Fun and Games? I think this was the one we couldn't show. I had to cut it because the LEDs were flashing. But yeah, this is a really cool game. Pup packs are tables with actual like uh, 
back glass videos and you know you got ACDC you got some sometimes you have music videos playing depending on what song is selected and stuff like that so that's in its own category really gorgeous tables on some of these future pinball is not as good as VPX there's only a few tables with this the gravity is a little janky on it but it's included if you want to just crap around with it Zakara pinball another one that's kind of a little janky but still if you just want to crap around and this some of these tables do not have like the feedback and stuff so they're just kind of just on here you know just for more chillax you got your pinball fx2 and fx3 and these were actually i i believe remade for uh virtual pins so it'll use the uh i don't know about the plunger on all of them but it on some of them it will fire the uh solenoids and stuff which is really cool so you can play all those in here and these are tables that aren't really out in the wild uh but they're really cool there's a lot more video elements to them um like look at this and you got your animated things and just really cool that they remade it for this. If you wanna play a random table, boom. Pick a, it just picks a random table for you. So not only is this thing a pinball machine, but if you want, you can go into the jukebox and there's like 1900 things to choose from and, and an update that's soon gonna be like 4,000. There's videos on some of them you can see here. So you got all these songs. You can just let it play like a jukebox. It's, it's really crazy. The Magna save buttons, you can sort by uh, letter. I don't know why the sound turned back on. Cooper. Uh, the, this thing is so realistic, guys. We're gonna show you in a second. The cat even thinks the ball is real on this thing. It's unbelievable. So on any table here, if you hit the launch button, it actually pops up with the how to play thing. So. If you're new to a table, it actually tells you what to do right here, which is super cool. I, I love that. So this is an older style machine here, a solid state machine. I These are some of my favorite. These tables look absolutely gorgeous on, on these, uh, the older tables. Um, so you guys see here, now I wanna show you an example of the nudging thing here. So here's our ball, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap the side here, now watch. You guys see the ball move a little bit there? See how it's just, I'm not giving it a hard nudge, I'm just giving it a little light nudge there. Hop, now hop up from the left side, watch, boom. You see I'm, and even up, I can, you guys see the ball kind of go up? Now, I just did a light nudge. Now watch if I do like a harder nudge, watch. You guys see the harder nudge? So it actually, it's not just you nudge it and it does the same nudge every time. It determines how hard you hit this thing, that is how hard the ball is gonna nudge. Is that insane or what? Now, we were talking about that plunger. Look, watch this. So, you guys see I'm pulling back the plunger here? It's actually emulating it here on the screen. So however far back I pull this plunger, that's how far back it's actually going on the screen. And this thing is like real time. Look at this, boom, boom. Like there is no delay on this. Incredible, it's probably one of my favorite things of this machine on how, Accurate that is look and you just do a light tap, you know, that's gonna allow you to get them skill shots Let's do a plunge here and a play and you'll notice when it goes up here and hits slings and the pot bumpers You'll hear the stuff firing in there And the different sounds you guys hear that boom This is one of my favorite games. I like this game. It's base. It's pretty simple You basically want to keep shooting that loop up here and if you hit this thing it lights this out lane um and then uh, if you hit that it also lights the spinner for a thousand and basically you want to make all your all your balls and then you want to go for the eight ball for a lot of points and you guys hear it when the ball's hitting the the sides it's actually and you'll see i have it caught on the flipper here now watch you see how i'm nudging it like that just a little bit of a nudge there i can even nudge it upwards and look it's actually emulating the nudge upwards incredible let's see if we can hit that little loop de loop over there there we go that adds multipliers and whatnot and you'll notice the solenoids and stuff firing down here when it's hitting the slings and you can feel the feedback on this it's it's incredible like the video is not going to do this justice and even like there, when I hit the, the rubbers here, you can actually feel it. When that sound plays, you can actually, it's like you can feel the feedback. It's incredible. I can't make a spinner to save my butt. Whoa, crap. I hit the rubber and right in the outline. You know, this game doesn't have a uh, dot matrix display or anything because the score is on the back glass. And this is probably one of my favorite back glass games. You can see this mod. I mean, this literally looks like the score thing is cut out. This looks like, it doesn't even look like a monitor up here. 
Again, that thing is not gonna do this justice and it keeps your score up here just like the actual game does and it looks gorgeous. Now, one thing you can also do if you really like to, yes, that's my usual game. It's so realistic, right in the outline. Ugh, look, see how I nudge that back in there? It's amazing. And uh, there it is, right in the outline. So that's a pretty accurate game there, me sucking at eight ball. So I'm gonna play Viking, and this one we used to have at our uh, local pinball place, Kickback, shout out to them. Um, this table is a great example of the, uh, they, a really good sound effect for the ball rolling on this, and it's just like, you can you can feel the ball like rolling around the table, it's, it's awesome. So sometimes you have to coin up on things, so again, you can, Insert real coins if you're feeling like it, or you just hit the coin button here. You see it adds the credits right up there. Then you just hit uh, start here, depending on how many players you want. We'll just add one for now. It does save your high scores as well, which is super awesome. Even after you turn the machine off, you'll see this has the same nudging thing. You see that? And this one's gonna be a great example of, of a forward nudge, because when the ball goes in the out lane here, you can forward nudge it back up into the game. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it, but it's just incredible. The You can, you can, look at that. The faster the ball is rolling, the louder the sound is, and you can actually feel it like rolling around the table. It's, it's incredible. It goes up into the saucers there. Now, one thing about these saucers that I don't understand when the people that make these tables, there's two different settings for these saucers, and one of them is like not as realistic. I went in and manually, here we go. Here you guys see I nudged it and I bounced it back up. That's exactly why the forward nudge and that's exactly what you do on the real table. I've had the opportunity to play a lot of these tables uh, at my local places in Pittsburgh, and that's exactly how it, this plays. So it's, it's crazy. It's scary how well this is emulated. A lot of these saucers, when the ball goes in there, on some of the games, it'll just like go in there and it'll just like freeze, it's like, there's an option, and I don't know why they don't turn these on in VPX, where it actually emulates an actual saucer, where you'll sometimes the ball will roll around and then settle. I went in and turned it on. I, there's no performance hit at all. I don't know why table makers just don't turn those on. So look, I nudged again. You see that? Something's beeping over here. Piggy, what do you think, man? Let's see if Piggy thinks of the ball, guys. Piggy, what do you think? She'll try and climb on this dang thing. Get that multipliers, baby. And you guys notice every time I'm hitting like a pop bumper or a drop target or whatever, you're getting that feedback and this it's just incredible. And you you can actually tell, like when I'm hitting stuff up here, you can tell that the sound is coming from here or the left side or the up, upper left or upper right. It's, and that's why those all those sensors inside were so important. And that's why having all that space inside the machine is just it just makes this uber realistic. Nudge it up. Oh, I didn't nudge it enough, and I think I tilted because my tilt bobber is like really sensitive. No. You guys hear that? That clink. It's like it's going in the freaking, it's amazing. It's like it's going in the ball trough thingy. You can hear the gates. You guys see when the ball went in there, it kind of spun around a little bit. That's an option that, I don't know why they don't, the table makers don't have that turned on by default, but you can just, that's just one thing you can go in and turn on. I just think it's more realistic for the saucers. So again, this is a great example of a game that's using the, the sounds and your, your uh, exciters and everything on the side just to really, make it like immersive. You guys hear that when I hit the ball, you can hear it underneath and that's where all those subwoofers and stuff underneath come into play. It does the match thing just like on the real game, saves your uh, scores and whatnot. So pinball FX3 tables here. It's a little more, again, this isn't a real table in real life, but it's got some neat little elements that aren't, you can't do in real pinball, which is so cool on this, so. And then there's your ball, got the skill shot. Look, even the cat's immersed. Piggy, what are you doing, man? 
Some people are worse. It'll still fire off the solenoids, but it doesn't have the nudge. So to, to nudge, you just have to use your uh, magna save buttons on the left and right, just because just because the limitations of Pinball FX3. But you know, most of the tables you're going to be able to do that nudge and everything, like I showed on the other ones. Yeah. I am the king yeah. of pain. And it's crazy when it ball kicks out. It it's like it. You can literally feel it like kick out of the uh, trough thing. It's crazy. So this one doesn't have a plunger. The game just has the launch button. And again, that's what you're going to be using down here. And you can do the skill shot. So if you hold in the left flipper and launch, the ball goes all the way around for your skill shot. There it is, just like so. That's it right there. So when that drawbridge went down, you heard that noise. That's the actual motor in there turning because these things actually have gears in them and it's really cool and you can actually tell that it was coming from up there. So super cool. Let's hopefully I can last more than one second on this ball here. And you can actually hear it like when it's going up and down the gates and... And even when it's going up and around these, it's... it's, it's uh, there's stuff inside the machine that's physically making that that feedback for you. So you're it's just super like it's amazing. This is a pretty good looking table too. And some of these will have the color DMDs too, so it's really really cool. We got the madness or the Molly Ball Madness here. Ooh, that was bad. And you can dead bounce and everything. You can drop catch, live catch, pass. It's it's amazing. Let's see if we can do a uh, post pass. So we got it here. We'll see if we can post pass it over here. It's just a yeah. I did it, but I did I I did it wrong. <laughs> let's see if we can do it again. All right, let's see if we can post pass from right to left. Yep. Look at that. That's crazy realistic. Like you can do all the moves. You can. You can uh, definitely drop catch. And these are all basically terms, if you're not familiar with pinball, it's just pinball fancy maneuvers, if you will. You can tip pass just like that. It's, it's, it's amazing. Boom, look at that. Zoop. I call that the evil Knievel when you do that. When it goes down and you go one flipper to the other. <laughs> Another thing here is this green button here. These, the rest of these are going to be reserved for future use. This green button here allows you to get into different things here. And you'll notice when I push this, some stuff goes up on the, so you got your volume there, you can mute it. Um, the, the main thing though you're going to do is custom scripts and you'll hit the little fire button down here. Now you can do different things. You can turn on your 3D glass. I'll show you guys that. If anything ever gets stuck, like some on some games when you exit them, it'll still show and it'll be like kind of frozen on the back glass or the DMD or whatever. All you have to do is go to, you hit that button, you go to custom scripts, restart popper, and you press that. And in like literally three seconds, it just does a quick restart and everything refreshes again. So it's like your oh crap button basically. Super easy to do. And there's also a reset button underneath too if you just want to do a quick reset of the entire machine. So you turn on your 3D glasses here. It restarts the machine. Now let's go to, uh, it's, it's neat. I'll give it that. You can definitely see a little bit of the depth on this uh, through the glasses. It's, it's a little bit, like I said, it's not gonna be VR, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's a neat little gimmick. You know, it is a little dark, unfortunately. But, you know, it's there, and I love that it's included, and just in case you wanna, you know, have fun, or, you know, if you have kids that might enjoy the little 3D aspect of it, it's, it's pretty neat. Piggy, what you doing, man? Porky butt. What are you doing? Adam's trying it out. Yeah, the 3D. Like I said, it's different. So you want to exit out. You want to get into the modding of things. You hit that little green button on the front. You go to custom scripts and then you go to exit. And that'll exit to desktop. Now, mine, the way it was set up, there was nothing on the desktop, but they just had the icons hidden. I have mine unhidden because I like to sometimes go in and mod things. So now we're going to grab that keyboard here. And it's just running Windows 10. Super simple. 
Where's the keyboard? Piggy, what'd you do with it, man? Piglet, what did you do with the keyboard, man? Dude, Piggy's 18, guys. Isn't that crazy? 18 years of age. That's like 85 human years. Cat's amazing, man. And she's enthralled with uh, virtual pinball as well. So you just turn it on here, and I have the dongle hooked in one of the USBs in the back of the computer there, so it's always in there. And if this is something you like to tinker with, this is a blast. Piggy, what are you doing, man? Piggy! Let's see if the, the virtual pinball is cat-proof, guys. Look, right here. Your animals will climb on it, and look, no harm done. This, this is, uh, this glass is super durable. Piggy the cat is here to attest for it right here. Piggy's up there, wipe off a little bit of the fur and you're good as new. And basically what this is, this is what the people design the tables in. So uh, it looks like there's a lot going on here and there is, and I don't really know a lot about the design stuff, but you guys can see over here, there's all these settings you can do. You can adjust the lights and there's gonna be a future thing, an update coming out eventually on this where you're gonna be able to use your magna save buttons to adjust the light of the table like how dark or bright it is which i think is cool because sometimes the tables are a little bit dark and you have to go in and adjust use the slider to kind of adjust them the video and graphic options you can overwrite the ball image on all vpx tables and you can make it like say it's christmas time you can make a freaking candy cane ball and it will play on every vpx table and you're just dragging and dropping images in there and you can also change the decal and add like balls the scratches on it and stuff so you can actually visually see the ball spinning so you can overwrite all of the default ones because when people make these tables you'll have different styles of pinballs in there some a little bit darker some are brighter and have scratches so uh, if you want them all the same when you're running a VPX game you can do that here physics is an important one here you guys will see slope for minimum difficulty slope for max difficulty this is your uh, pitch of the table on how slanted it is and that's going to control how fast that ball's moving and stuff so say I want like an older table for example I don't want the ball moving down the table as fast you can adjust these numbers here and go in and play you can actually like say I adjust these numbers you can do it right from here so if you hit play table ow it actually launches the table with all the back glass and everything right from here so you don't have to go into the menu you guys can see it right here look it loaded everything so you can test play it you can try your pitch or whatever you changed on there and then when you're done you just hit exit and then you use your mouse and then you just go uh you'll see a little thing on the screen here it says quit to editor you just click that and then it goes right back to VPX. So you can really dive into this thing. I'll show you guys. Say you like exit it out and you're like, oh crap, I don't know what to do. So there's a little button under here. This is how you shut it down. So you press this, that shuts windows down and then you hit your main power thing after all the monitors are off. You hit this little button right here. It's like your oh crap button. If you press that guys, it's just gonna do a little soft reset here. It takes maybe 10, 15 seconds to do a full boot up and then it's gonna go right back into the uh, pin up popper menu and you'll be good to go. There we go, you guys can see it. See the paper, and it's blown, boom. Now it kind of rested again, you see the paper there. So really, really cool and you'll, put, you'll have it on games like Twister as well. You can even do all the flipper techniques in pinball, like the dead bounce, the post pass, and even things like the live catch. Overall, I'd have to give the Ultra VP7 by Rec Room World a rating of cool plus plus, baby. And it's literally right now the most realistic virtual pinball machine on the planet. You guys can visit virtualpinball.com if you want to check out more about the machine and see the other products that they have. Arcademat.com, plush and prizes for sale, and like we always say, thanks for virtual pinballing.